Hey, I'm Tori Delore, and I'm converting a Ram Pro Master into my second home on wheels while also living in it full time. This is my second video in my series walking you through step by step my electrical install. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay tuned for part three, where we'll be wiring all of my DC connections into the system. When I arrived, I pulled right into their shop and they already had the CNC machine going and cutting out the Sandy Vans custom storage box for the system. But first, I want to show you what the system looks like when it's in a completed van. Sandy Van uses Red Arc in all of their van builds, so luckily we had plenty to choose from right here in their parking lot to show you. And this is Stolp, the chief build officer for Sandy Vans, who will be doing the install today. So, Tori, you can look forward to having this beautiful Red Vision display. Eventually, when you have walls and stuff in your van, you can install this in there. But this controls all of our lights. It has dimmable options, controls your water pump fridge, whatever you want to put on there, we can program it and uh, yeah, it's a really cool system. The system itself was located underneath this bench here. This is the Red Arc setup and this is a TVMS Rogue. This is an internally relayed unit. This is basically a fuse box, but it's relays instead. The way it works is if there's a short or anything, it just gives you an over temp fault on the screen. It's a very sleek, intuitive design. And this is actually the entire system. So we have our manager 30, you're actually going to be getting a manager 100, which is 100 amps of charging, which is really cool. This is actually my first time working with that, so I'm really excited. And um, underneath, we have a 2000 watt inverter. And then underneath that, we also have two 206 amp hour lithium batteries, making it a 412 amp hour system. And it's all jam packed in here, but you can see we have ventilation. The inverter fans naturally pull air through this whole system. We also have ventilation in the back of this bench as well. So it keeps all the electronics nice and cool. And then of course, if anything bad happens, there's your master switch. So Tori, you can look forward to having all this jammed in your van, hopefully today. It's gonna be a lot, but we'll see if we can get it done. So our first step here today is connecting the alternator charging. This way, whenever I'm driving the vehicle, it will then charge my electrical system. Because I have the Manager 100, it can charge at up to a 100 amp hour rate, which is pretty insane. The Manager 100 has something called a battery isolator, so it will never pull too much power from your car's battery or pull power from your vehicle when it's not running. However, a really unique feature about it is that it will prioritize green energy first. So it will try to top off your batteries from solar panels first, and it actually can also have the ability to send back charge into your car battery when it's at 100% to keep your car battery topped off as well. So we're tearing this part out because this gives us access to this 12 volt socket that has a key on it. That indicates that this key turns on at accessory. So this gives power whenever the key is in accessory mode. So this will tell the electrical system when to pull power from this battery. So it won't be continuously pulling power while it's sitting. It'll only pull power while the vehicle's running. So we're gonna cut this and splice in a single wire. Something else that I'm super excited about and that's very unique to the Manager 100 is that with just a push of a few buttons, this setup will actually be able to jumpstart my vehicle batteries if it's ever dead. Meaning if I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere, I don't have to wait for someone to come help me and jumpstart my vehicle or pay some kind of fee or waste my time. I can get the vehicle back on the road quickly with no worries of being stranded. And in the last few months that I've had and been using this system, I actually got the chance to try out this feature firsthand when I may have accidentally left my car on before going into Planet Fitness to take a shower while living in my van in Las Vegas. I was abundantly upset to say the least that my car had died and I thought I had wasted my whole day and that it was gonna be hours while I waited for Progressive to come and jumpstart it, but then I remembered the system had this feature and with the press of two buttons, it recharged my vehicle's battery and within 15 minutes, the vehicle was back and ready to go. I didn't have to open the hood or have jumper cables or use someone else's car and God forbid socially interact with strangers. I just had to press two buttons and wait. So yeah, that was the day that I became really just in love with the system. No way. Oh my God. That's incredible. So now we have the signal wire pigtailed off of the key socket on the ProMaster. I'm gonna pull probably like 30 feet of this wire and just feed it through the battery tray right here. My one knot is also gonna go through there and the one knot is gonna be what is the alternator charging element of the system. So heat shrink this up and get it all ran to the back.
That's how you want that to look. hook this up to a fuse and then after the fuse I'll go with like a thinner wire that I'll plug into the system so the thin wire will only be like a short run so it won't be sketchy. Next is the creation of Sandy Van's custom wooden storage box. The box is 17.5 by 18.5 by 18.5, which is perfect to fit my two 206 amp hour SOK lithium batteries. The only thing on the outside of that box extending past that is your wire runs and the manager alpha, which depends on the size you choose, so that can vary pretty deeply. For this electrical system, we use SOK batteries protection, under tent protection, and internal heaters. So these batteries are pretty great. Put it on the wrong side. So next, Stolp will be installing the Red Arc components. Now that the alternator charging is complete and the storage box is created. For this system, we are using the Red Arc Smart Battery Monitor RedArc TVMS, RedArc 2000 watt inverter, and the brand new RedArc Manager Alpha 100. This is actually the very first Manager Alpha 100 in the States that Soap will be installing today. It's a new release from RedArc as an upgrade option from their Manager 30. No, God! 30 and 100 numbers refer to the charging power, so the Manager 30 charges at a 30 amp hour rate, and the Manager 100 can charge at a 100 amp hour rate, which is so powerful that the alternator charging drawing from the vehicle battery, we actually set to cap at 80 amp hours, so it's safe for the alternator. That's how much power this thing can draw. This is... That's the shunt. Okay, with so the that, Bluetooth. That no. reads all the power going in and out of your system. Okay. So that'll tell you like how much power you're using, how much power you're receiving. And then these? These are bus bars. So this is your negative bus bar. Mm -hmm. So this is all your like negative loads are attached to this and then all your positive loads attached to that. The next piece for the install is the RedArc 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This piece will power all of the 110 volt appliances and convert the created and stored DC electricity into AC power. This inverter has a 3500 watt surge rating and a 92% conversion efficiency. This giant red master switch can kill all power to the system. It offers a way to service the system safely, ensuring no power is flowing through, and also acts as a way to turn everything off in your system if you plan on leaving your van in storage for some time, or a similar situation so that you can extend the life of your batteries. The next component is the brand new RedArc Manager Alpha 100. The Manager Alpha is the simplest battery management system on the market. It's also what basically makes this an all-in-one system, simplifying the wiring you have to do and the pieces you have to buy. It's a DC to DC charger, a battery isolator, a 240 volt charger, a low disconnect controller, a battery monitor, a MPPT solar regulator, has a connection for shore power charging, which means yes, this will provide you a way to charge from all three options, your alternator, solar, and shore power or an AC plug. Combining this with the TVMS and inverter is essentially everything you need. Speaking of which, the next thing installed will be the TVMS, which stands for Total Vehicle Management System, and this is the brain of the system. You would consider this a fuse box. It's a relay box. It has 10 different 12 volt drops on it. You could pull 10 amps from each of those drops. So anything that exceeds that, we either need to put a relay or have a breaker set on this panel so that you don't go through the Rogue or the Red Vision for that. TVMS has 10 input channels for DC load connections, like your water pump and lights. Plus it will give your lights built-in dimmer, so you don't have to even worry about that or do anything for that, which is so great. It just keeps minimizing the amount of work you have to do. This can be connected to the Red Vision mounted screen, or it is also available through Bluetooth on an app through your phone. If you want to though, you can still connect physical switches between your loads and the TVMS to have more switches in more areas throughout your van. The TVMS will provide the state of charge, power in and output, and the ambient temperature info. And now the final step is to mount the box in the vehicle and finish up the wiring.
The Red Vision screen is the last component which just plugs right into the TVMS and will be the screen telling me all of the data. If you want to learn more about the screen and see the rest of the install, subscribe for part 3 where I will be personally DIY pre-wiring the van for you step by step and mounting the hub to finish the electrical system.